Hey guys, this is a quick little video all about the properties that are associated with ionic compounds, giant ionic structures. Now, you're going to know a lot of this from your studies previously in chemistry, but knowing it isn't enough anymore. You need to be able to explain it and you need to be able to apply it as well. So don't skip over this video, think it's going to be an easy video. There is some hard stuff going on in here as well. If you want some questions to go with this, you can pop over to my website, get the workbook which has loads more choice questions in there to help you properly work out whether you've learnt anything, um, whether you can apply what you know or whether you just can recall it. We need to move above the recall level now. Ionic bonding is bonding between a metal and a non-metal. Non-metals over this side of the periodic table will form negative ions and metals over this side of the periodic table are going to form positive ions. And this is the transfer of electrons. When we draw ionic bonding, it's always in um, a 1 to 1 or a 1 to 2 or a 1 to 3 ratio with something transferring electrons to the other thing. So you get this really false impression that a bond is between a positive ion and a negative ion. Now the first false impression that you get is there's actually a bond in there. There isn't actually a bond in there. Remember, positive and negative things attract each other. So what you're going to get is an attraction, and this is an electrostatic attraction. The other false impression that you are given is that it's just between one thing and another thing. But ionic compounds are giant ionic lattices. So instead of just having one positive ion and one negative ion, what you actually have are massive, massive structures which are positive and negative all over the place. And every single thing in there is attracted to every single thing in there. So all of the positive ions are attracted to all of the negative ions. The amount of attraction is going to vary based on how far away they are. So they're mainly going to be attracted to the six nearest ones. Because remember, this is a 3D lattice. It's not just going to be attracted to the four nearest ones. There's the one on top and there's the one on the bottom. And then any other one that it's going to be close enough to, it's going to have attraction, a smaller attraction as well, but it is still going to be an attraction. Here is some plasticine where hopefully you can get a better impression of it being a 3D model as opposed to this very false, flat, um, sometimes one-to-one -one model that we've used in the past. Now these electrostatic attractions are very strong. If you were to try and break these attractions using energy alone, you would need a large amount of energy. Which is why ionic compounds have a high melting point and a high boiling point. Because you need to put a large amount of energy from heat in there to break the electrostatic attractions of the ionic bonds. However, they can be broken um, by melting them, so with a high um, melting point, or more easily by dissolving them. Ionic compounds, for the most part, are going to dissolve easily. And this is because of the charges on them. Water is a charged compound. So when water comes along here, you can see that the oxygen is a little bit negative and the hydrogens are a little bit positive. So it's going to go and find, the negative oxygen is gonna go and find that positive um, atom, that positive ion, sorry, and rip it away from the other things. So then it's the water is breaking the ionic compound down little bit by little bit. When it is dissolved, it can conduct electricity. 
and it can conduct when it's molten or dissolved because charged particles are now free to move. It cannot conduct when it is a solid because the charged particles are fixed in place and they cannot move.